Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca Spanish pronunciation, Al Beta A Nu Theta Ka Beta E Theta E Beta aka, Gareth de la Frontera, c. 1488, 1490–1492 Seville, c. 1557–1558, 1559–1560 was a Spanish explorer of the New World, and one of four survivors of the 1527 Narvaez expedition. During eight years of traveling across the U.S. Southwest, he became a trader and faith healer to various Native American tribes before reconnecting with Spanish civilization in Mexico in 1536. After returning to Spain in 1537, he wrote an account, first published in 1542 as La Relación y Comentarios, the account and commentaries, which in later editions was retitled Naufragios, shipwrecks. Cabeza de Vaca is sometimes considered a proto-anthropologist for his detailed accounts of the many tribes of Native Americans that he encountered. In 1540, Cabeza de Vaca was appointed adentado of what is now Argentina, where he was governor and captain general of New Andalusia. He worked to build up the population of Buenos Aires, where settlement had declined due to poor administration. Cabeza de Vaca was transported to Spain for trial in 1545. Although his sentence was eventually commuted, he never returned to the Americas. He died in Seville. <laughs> Early life and education Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca was born around 1490 into a Hidalgo family, the son of Francisco Núñez de Vera and Teresa Cabeza de Vaca y de Zarita, in the town of Jerez de la Frontera, Cadiz, Spain. Despite the family's status as minor nobility, they possessed modest economic resources. In 16th century documents, his name appears as Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca. Alvar Núñez's maternal surname, Cabeza de Vaca, meaning head of cow, was said to be associated with a maternal ancestor, Martín Alhaja. He had shown the Spanish king a secret mountain pass, marked by a cow's skull, enabling the king to win the Battle of Las Navas de Tolosa against the Muslim Moors in 1212. Some sources indicate that after his parents died when he was young, the boy Alvar was taken in by relatives, most likely his aunt and uncle or his paternal grandfather, Pedro de Vera. Evidence suggests that he probably had a moderately comfortable early life. He was appointed chamberlain for the house of a noble family in his teen years then participated in the conquest of the Canary Islands where he was appointed a governor. In 1511, he enlisted in the Spanish army, serving in Italy with distinction, Spain and Navarre. He received several medals of honor and became more of a political figure in Spain. In 1527, Núñez joined the Florida expedition of conquistador Panfilo de Narváez during which he served as treasurer and marshal. Narvaez expedition and early Native American relations In 1527, Panfilo de Narvaez was sent by Spain's King Charles V to explore the unknown territory which the Spanish called La Florida, including not only present-day Florida but a large, poorly defined section of what today is the southeastern United States. Cabeza de Vaca was attached to this expedition as the expedition's treasurer. Records indicate that he also had a military role as one of the chief officers on the Narvaez expedition, noted as sheriff or marshal. On June 17, 1527, the fleet of five ships set sail towards the province of Panuco, which was on the western border of Florida. When they stopped in Hispaniola for supplies, Narvaez lost approximately 150 of his men, who chose to stay on the island rather than continue with the expedition. The expedition continued to Cuba, where Cabeza de Vaca took two ships to recruit more men and buy supplies. Their fleet was battered by a hurricane, resulting in the destruction of both ships and loss of most of Cabeza de Vaca's men. Narvaez arrived days later to pick up the survivors. By February 1528, the remaining ships and men resumed their expedition, reaching Florida in April. They anchored near what is now known as the Jungle Prada site in St. Petersburg, claiming this land as a possession of the Spanish crown. After communicating with the Native Americans, the Spanish heard rumors that a city named Appalachian was full of food and gold. Against the advice of Cabeza de Vaca, Narvaez decided to split up his men. Some 300 were to go on foot to Appalachian and the other would sail to Panuco. Appalachian had no gold but had only corn, but the explorers were told a village known as Aute, about five or nine days away, was rich. 
They pushed on through the swamps, harassed by the Native Americans. A few Spanish men were killed and more wounded. When they arrived in Aute, they found that the inhabitants had burned down the village and left. But the fields had not been harvested, so at least the Spanish scavenged food there. After several months of fighting native inhabitants through wilderness and swamp, the party decided to abandon the interior and try to reach Panuco. Slaughtering and eating their remaining horses, they gathered the stirrups, spurs, horseshoes and other metal items. They fashioned a bellows from deer hide to make a fire hot enough to forge tools and nails. They used these in making five primitive boats to use to get to Mexico. Cabeza de Vaca commanded one of these vessels, each of which held 50 men. Depleted of food and water, the men followed the coast westward. But when they reached the mouth of the Mississippi River, the powerful current swept them out into the gulf, where the five rafts were separated by a hurricane. Some lives were lost forever, including that of Narvaez. Two crafts with about 40 survivors each, including Cabeza de Vaca, wrecked on or near Galveston Island, now part of Texas. Out of the 80 or so survivors, only 15 lived past that winter. The explorers called the island Malhado Ill Fate in Spanish, or the Island of Doom. They tried to repair the rafts, using what remained of their own clothes as oakum to plug holes, but they lost the rafts to a large wave. As the number of survivors dwindled rapidly, they were enslaved for a few years by various American Indian tribes of the upper Gulf Coast. Because Cabeza de Vaca survived and prospered from time to time, some scholars argue that he was not enslaved but using a figure of speech. He and other noblemen were accustomed to better living. Their encounters with harsh conditions and weather, and being required to work like native women, must have seemed like slavery. The tribes to which Cabeza de Vaca was enslaved included the Hans and the Capics, and tribes later called the Karankawa and Coahuiltacan. After escaping, only four men, Cabeza de Vaca, Andres Durantes de Carranza, Alonso del Castillo Maldonado, and an enslaved Moroccan Berber named Esteban later called Estevanico, survived to reach Mexico City. Traveling mostly with this small group, Cabeza de Vaca explored what is now the U.S. state of Texas, as well as the northeastern Mexican states of Tamaulipas, Nuevo Leon and Coahuila, and possibly smaller portions of New Mexico and Arizona. He traveled on foot through the then-colonized territories of Texas and the coast. He continued through Coahuila and Nueva Vizcaya, then down the Gulf of California coast to what is now Sinaloa, Mexico, over a period of roughly eight years. Throughout those years, Cabeza de Vaca and the other men adapted to the lives of the indigenous people they stayed with, whom he later described as roots people, the fish and blackberry people, or the fig people, depending on their principal foods. During his wanderings, passing from tribe to tribe, Cabeza de Vaca later reported that he developed sympathies for the indigenous peoples. He became a trader and a healer, which gave him some freedom to travel among the tribes. As a healer, Cabeza de Vaca used blowing like the Native Americans to heal, but claimed that God and the Christian cross led to his success. His healing of the sick gained him a reputation as a faith healer. His group attracted numerous Native followers, who regarded them as children of the sun, endowed with the power to heal and destroy. As Cabeza de Vaca grew healthier, he decided that he would make his way to Panuco, supporting himself through trading. He finally decided to try to reach the Spanish colony in Mexico. Many natives were said to accompany the explorers on their journey across what is now known as the American Southwest and Northern Mexico. After finally reaching the colonized lands of New Spain, where he first encountered fellow Spaniards near modern-day Culiacán, Cabeza de Vaca and the three other men reached Mexico City. From there he sailed back to Europe in 1537. Numerous researchers have tried to trace his route across the southwest. As he did not begin writing his chronicle until back in Spain, he had to rely on memory. He did not have the instruments clock and astrolabe to determine his location, he had to rely on dead reckoning, and was uncertain of his route. Aware that his recollection has numerous errors in chronology and geography, historians have worked to put together pieces of the puzzle to discern his paths. Return to America In 1540, Cabeza de Vaca was appointed Adentado of the Rio de la Plata in South America. The colony comprised parts of what is now Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. Cabeza de Vaca was assigned to find a usable route from this colony to the colony in Peru, on the other side of the Andes Mountains on the Pacific coast. 
En route, he disembarked from his fleet at Santa Catarina Island in modern Brazil. With an indigenous force, plus 250 musketeers and 26 horses, he followed native trails discovered by Alexo Garcia Overland to the district's Spanish capital, Asuncion, far inland on the Great Paraguay River. Cabeza de Vaca is thought to have been the first European to see the Iguacu Falls. In March 1542 Cabeza de Vaca met with Domingo Martínez de Arala and relieved him of his position as governor. The government of Asuncion pledged loyalty to Cabeza de Vaca, and Arala was assigned to explore a possible route to Peru. Once Arala returned and reported, Cabeza de Vaca planned his own expedition. He hoped to reach Los Reyes a base that Arala set up and push forward into the jungle in search of a route to the gold and silver mines of Peru. The expedition did not go well, and Cabeza de Vaca returned to Asuncion. During his absence, Arala had stirred up resistance to Cabeza de Vaca's rule and capitalized on political rivalries. Scholars widely agree that Cabeza de Vaca had an unusually sympathetic attitude towards the Native Americans for his time. The elite settlers in modern Argentina, known as Incomenderos, generally did not agree with his enlightened conduct toward the natives, they wanted to use them for labor. Because he lost elite support, and Buenos Aires was failing as a settlement, not attracting enough residents, Martínez de Arala arrested Cabeza de Vaca in 1544 for poor administration. The former explorer was returned to Spain in 1545 for trial. Although eventually exonerated, Cabeza de Vaca never returned to South America. He wrote an extensive report on the Rio de la Plata colony in South America, strongly criticizing the conduct of Martínez de Arala. The report was bound with his earlier La Relacion and published under the title Comentarios Commentary. He died poor in Seville around the year 1560. Topic: <laughs> La Relacion of Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca. La Relacion of Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca is the account of his experiences with the Narvaez expedition and after being wrecked on Galveston Island in November 1528. Cabeza de Vaca and his last three men struggled to survive. They wandered along the Texas coast as prisoners of the Han and Kapok American Indians for two years, while Cabeza de Vaca observed the people, picking up their ways of life and customs. They traveled through the American Southwest and ultimately reached Mexico City, nearly eight years after being wrecked on the island. In 1537, Cabeza de Vaca returned to Spain, where he wrote his narratives of the Narvaez expedition. These narratives were collected and published in 1542 in Spain. They are now known as the relation of Olvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca. The narrative of Cabeza de Vaca is the first European book devoted completely to North America. His detailed account describes the lives of numerous tribes of American Indians of the time. Cabeza de Vaca showed compassion and respect for native peoples, which, together with the great detail he recorded, distinguishes his narrative from others of the period. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Role of observer. Cabeza de Vaca reported on the customs and ways of American Indian life, aware of his status as an early European explorer. He spent eight years with various peoples, including the Kapok, Han, Avivare, and Arbidao. He describes details of the culture of the Malhado people, the Kapok, and Han American Indians, such as their treatment of offspring, their wedding rites, and their main sources of food. Cabeza de Vaca and his three fellow survivors at times served as slaves to the American Indians to survive. Through his observations, Cabeza de Vaca provides insights into 16th-century American Indian life near the present-day Mexico-Texas border. For many peoples the accounts of Cabeza de Vaca and Hernando de Soto are the only written records of their existence. By the time of the next European contact, many had vanished, presumably from the diseases Cabeza de Vaca and his companions unknowingly exposed them to. Topic. Ambassador for Christ. One of Cabeza de Vaca's greatest achievements of his journey, was that he played an important role as an ambassador to bring peace throughout the land. As the party of travelers passed from one tribe to the next, warring tribes would immediately make peace and become friendly, so that the natives could receive the party and give them gifts. Cabeza notes in his personal account of his journey that in this way, we left the whole country in peace. Cabeza saw these events as part of his mission and purpose in America, acknowledging in his account that he believed that 
God was guiding us to where we could serve him. Cabeza's greatest challenge as an ambassador came when he attempted to bring peace between the conquering Spanish army and the natives. As Cabeza approached Spanish settlement, he and his companions were very grieved to see the destruction of the native villages and enslavement of the natives. The fertile land lay uncultivated and the natives were nearly starving, hiding in the forest, for fear of the Spanish army. Cabeza then encountered Diego de Alcaraz, commander of a slavery expedition of about 20 horsemen and attempted to negotiate peace between them and the natives. However, as soon as they departed, Diego went back on his word and plundered Cabeza's entourage of natives that he had sent back home. Not long after this, Cabeza encountered the chief alcalde Spanish captain of the province named Melcher Diaz. Melcher Diaz ordered Cabeza to bring the natives back from the forests so that they would recultivate the land. Cabeza and Melcher invited the natives to convert to Christianity and the natives did so willingly. Cabeza instructed them to build a large wooden cross in each village, which would cause members of the Spanish army to pass through the village and not attack it. Soon afterward the Diego de Alcaraz expedition returned and explained to Melcher that they were shocked at how, on their return journey, not only did they find the land repopulated, but the natives coming to greet them with crosses in hand and also gave them provisions. Melcher then ordered Diego that no harm be done to them. Topic. Personal report Cabeza de Vaca wrote this narrative to Charles V to transmit what I saw and heard in the nine years I wandered lost and miserable over many remote lands. He wanted to convey not merely a report of positions and distances, flora and fauna, but of the customs of the numerous indigenous people I talked with and dwelt among, as well as any other matters I could hear of or observe. He took care to present facts, as a full account of what he observed. The relation is the only account of many details concerning the indigenous people whom he encountered. The accuracy of his account has been validated by later reports of others, as well as by the oral traditions of descendants of some of the tribes. Cabeza's account also served as a petition to the King of Spain to both establish a permanent Christian mission and eventually establish the native tribes as a nation under the governance of Spain. In his reflection Cabeza writes to the King of Spain, May God in his infinite mercy grant that in the days of your majesty and under your power and sway, these people become willingly and sincerely subjects of the true Lord who created and redeemed them. We believe they will be, and that your majesty is destined to bring it about, as it will not be at all difficult. Cabeza continued to be a strong advocate for the rights of Native American Indians throughout his lifetime. Topic. American Indian nations noted by name Cabeza de Vaca identified the following peoples by name in his La Relacion 1542. The following list shows his names, together with what scholars suggested in 1919 were the likely tribes identified by names used in the 20th century. By that time, tribal identification was also related to more linguistic data, possible Karankawan groups. Capix, Cocos Diaguanes, Cujanes Quivines, Copanes Guaycones, Guapites Camones, Karankaguases, related to Karankawa Chiruco, Pade Orcaquiza Han, Pade Orcaquiza Possible Tonkawan groups Mendica, Tamiques Mariames, Gerinames Iguases, Anakwas Possible Coahuilta Can or Desert groups Ketoles The Fig People Acubadaos Avivares Anagados Cuddlechuches Malyacones Susolas Comos, Comicrudo Quayos Arbadaos Ateos Cuchendados Topic. Commentarios In 1555, after a four-year position as adentado in Rio de la Plata, Cabeza de Vaca wrote from memory a chronicle of the Narvaez expedition in South America. It is believed that his secretary at the time, Puro Hernandez, transcribed Cabeza de Vaca's account in what is known as Comentarios. The publication of Comentarios was appended to La Relacion as a joint publication in Valladolid, Spain entitled, Naufragios. At that time, explorers often published their reports of travels in foreign lands. Topic. Later editions 
In 1906, Naufragios was published in a new edition in Madrid, Spain. The introduction says the intent of this edition was to publicize Cabeza de Vaca's observations and experiences to strengthen authentic representations. This has been described as having the objective of portraying Cabeza de Vaca as less aggressive, while trying to authenticate his role as a sympathetic observer of the natives. Topic. Place in Chicano literature Herrera 2011 classifies Cabeza de Vaca's La Relación as the first major contribution to Chicano literature. Scholars have identified five major periods of Chicano literature, Spanish-Mexican, Mexican-American, Annexation, Chicano Renaissance, and Modern. Cabeza de Vaca is classified as part of the Spanish-Mexican period. He recounted eight years of travel and survival in the area of Chicano culture, present-day Texas, New Mexico, and northern Mexico. His account is the first known written description of the American Southwest. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Film adaptation. The drama feature film Cabeza de Vaca 1991, a Mexican production, was directed by Nicolas Echevarria and starred Juan Diego. Based on Naufragios, the film was entered into the 41st Berlin International Film Festival. A DVD version was released in 2012. Topic. Representation in other media Leila Lalami's novel, The Moor's Account 2014, is a fictional memoir of Estevanico, the Moroccan slave who survived the journey and accompanied Cabeza de Vaca through the southwest. He is considered to be the first black explorer of North America. Lalami claims that the chronicle gives him one sentence, The fourth survivor is Estevanico, an Arab Negro from Azamor. However, there are several others referenced to him in the account. Lord Buckley created a monologue The Gasser based on Haniel Long's novella. This was first recorded in 1954 and again in 1959. His story is noted in the first episode of Ken Burns' The West, a PBS documentary which first aired in 1996. <laughs> Topic. Ancestors of Cabeza de Vaca Topic. Bibliography Topic. English editions Cabeza de Vaca, Alvar Núñez. The Journey of Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca and His Companions from Florida to the Pacific 1528-1536. Translation of La Relacion, ed. Ad. F. Bandelier. New York, Allerton Book Co., 1904. Cabeza de Vaca, Alvar Núñez. The Narrative of Cabeza de Vaca, Translation of La Relacion, ed. Relena Adorno and Patrick Charles Potts. Lincoln, Nebraska, University of Nebraska Press 2003. ISBN 0-8032-6416-X One of many editions Cabeza de Vaca, Alvar Núñez. Cabeza de Vaca's Adventures in the Unknown Interior of America, Translation of La Relacion, Cyclone Covey. Santa Fe, New Mexico, University of New Mexico Press 1983. ISBN 0-8263-0656-X The account, Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca's Relacion. Translated by Martin Favada and José Fernández. Houston, Arte Publico Press. February 1993 1542. ISBN 978-1558850606. Cabeza de Vaca, Alvar Núñez. Chronicle of the Narváez Expedition, Translation of La Relacion, translated by David Fry, edited by Elon Stavins. Norton Critical Edition, 2013. ISBN 978-0393918151 Cabeza de Vaca, Alvar Núñez. The Commentaries of Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, The Conquest of the River Plate, Part 2. London, Hacklet, 1891, First English Edition. Topic: Books about Cabeza de Vaca. Adorno, Relena and Potts, Patrick Charles. 
Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, His Account, His Life and the Expedition of Panfilo de Narváez, three volumes, in English, University of Nebraska Press, Lincoln, London 1999, hardcover, ISBN 978-0803214637, Howard, David A. 1996. Conquistador in Chains, Cabeza de Vaca and the Indians of the Americas. Tuscaloosa, University of Alabama Press. ISBN 978-0817308285. Krieger, Alex D. We Came Naked and Barefoot, The Journey of Cabeza de Vaca Across North America. Austin, University of Texas Press, 2002. ISBN 978-0-292-74235-2. Long, Haniel. Interlinear to Cabeza de Vaca 1936, a fictionalized account of Cabeza de Vaca's journey Resendez, Andrés. Alain Strange, The Epic Journey of Cabeza de Vaca, Basic Books, Perseus, 2007. ISBN 0-465-06840-5. Schneider, Paul. Brutal Journey, Cabeza de Vaca and the Epic First Crossing of North America, New York, Henry Holt, 2007. ISBN 0-8050-8320-0 Udall, Stuart L. Majestic Journey, Coronado's Inland Empire, Museum of New Mexico Press, 1995. ISBN 0-89013-285-2 Varnum, Robin. Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, American Trailblazer. Norman, Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma Press, 2014. Wild, Peter 1991, Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca. Boise, Idaho, Boise State University, 1991. ISBN 978-0884301004 OCLC 2451595156365000 Print and online Topic. Spanish Adorno, Relena and Potts, Patrick Charles, Alvaro Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, Sus Lagros, Su Vida y la Expedición de Panfilo de Narváez, three volumes, in Spanish, University of Nebraska Press, Lincoln, London September 15, 1999, hardcover, 1317 pages, ISBN 978-0803214545 Caba, Ruben, Gomez Lucina, Eloisa. 2008. La Odisea de Cabeza de Vaca, Tras los Pasos de Elvar Nunez por Tierras Americanas, The Odyssey of Cabeza de Vaca, On the Footsteps of Elvar Nunez on American Lands, Historical Essay. Terra Incognita, in Spanish. Barcelona, Edhasa. ISBN 9788435039381. Topic. Caba, Ruben, Gomez Lucina, Eloisa October 2008. Cabeza de Vaca, El Ulises del Nuevo Mundo. Cabeza de Vaca, The Ulysses of the New World. Clio Historia in Spanish 84, 72-79. ISSN 1579-3532. Yauregui, Carlos. Cabeza de Vaca, Mala Cosa y las Vicisitudes de la Extrañeza. Revista de Estudios Hispanicos XLVIII, 3 2014, 421-447. Mora, Juan Francisco, ed., July 2007. Carta de Luis Ramírez a su padre desde el Brasil, 1528. PDF. Lemir, Parnasio in Spanish. University of Valencia, AJKDAS, LKJFL, KFHODHSUHYJ. ISSN 1579-735X. Retrieved 14 April 2010. Mora, Juan Francisco July 2011. Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, El Gran Burlador de América, Second Edition Corrected and Augmented. PDF. Lemir, Parnasio in Spanish. University of Valencia. ISSN 1579-735X. Retrieved 7 July 2011. Mora, Juan Francisco October 2008. Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, El Gran Burlador de América. 
PDF. Lemire, Parnasio in Spanish. University of Valencia. ISSN 1579-735X. Retrieved 14 April 2010. Mora, Juan Francisco, October 2013, El Libro 50 de la Historia General y Natural de las Indias Infortunios y Naufragios de Gonzalo Fernández de Oviedo 1535, Genesis e Inspiración de Algunos Episodios de Naufragios de Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca 1542? Lemire 17, 87-100. University of Valencia http colon slash slash parnasio uv dot es slash lemire slash revista slash revista seventeen slash o six underscore mora underscore one dot pdf Topic Italian Giovan Battista Ramusio, Della Navigazione et Viaggi Terzo Volume, pp. three hundred ten to three hundred thirty Relation che fis Elvaro Nunez detto capo di vaca. Venetia, 1565-1606 edition. Topic. See also. Choctaw. Campero. Criollo. Mississippian culture. Pinus remota. Quivira and Cibola. Francisco Vázquez de Coronado, another Spanish explorer in North America. Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, sculpture, Houston, Texas. Topic. References. Topic. External links. La Relación Online. Works by Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca at Internet Archive Works by Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca at LibriVox public domain audiobooks. The Journey of Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca 1542, translated by Fanny Bandelier 1905, HTML version the Journey of Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca 1542, translated by Fanny Bandelier 1905, PDF version. Cabeza de Vaca's Adventures in the Unknown Interior of America English translation from 1961. The Journey of Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca and His Companions from Florida to the Pacific, 1528-1536, hosted by the Portal to Texas History. Naufragios de Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca at Project Gutenberg in Spanish resources Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca at American Journeys Cabeza de Vaca's Florida History. The Journey of Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca. American Journeys, Wisconsin History. Cabeza de Vaca Primary Source Adventure, Lesson Plan hosted by the Portal to Texas History Cabeza de Vaca, La Salle, published in 1901, Portal to Texas History. Learning from Cabeza de Vaca. Texas Beyond History. University of Texas at Austin. Chipman, Donald E. Cabeza de Vaca, Elvar Núñez. TSHA Handbook of Texas Online. Texas State Historical Association. New Perspective on the West. Elvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca articles. Las Midas Culturales de la Otredad. Revisiones Contemporáneas de Naufragios, de Cabeza de Vaca Artículo de Santiago Juan Navarro Publicado en Letras 18-19 201-224, in Spanish audiovisual. PBS documentary The Conquistadors PBS, website includes a map of the proposed southern route through Texas and northern Mexico. Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca the West, a documentary by Ken Burns for PBS, Episode 1. Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca on IMDb.